Did you know that 88% of adults in a study I did believe that technoference is a big problem in our society? Hey, I'm Dr. Dave, and on today's Thrive in 5, I'll share some technology tips and traps that may be helpful in reducing digital distractions and creating real connection. <laughs> Now there's all kinds of opinions about technology and the role it's playing in people's lives and their relationships. There's even a new term for this called technoference, which refers to technology interfering with people's face-to-face -face interactions and relationships. Hold on a second, let me take a quick selfie. Okay, just teasing. Now you may remember from other videos that we're all born with three fundamental human needs, safety, satisfaction, and connection. And today's topic about technoference is about creating connection and minimizing digital distractions that often get in the way. I conducted a study on this topic with 632 parents across the United States about how they feel about technology. So here's some of what I found. About 70% feel like technology interrupts family time at least occasionally, and 60% are concerned about the influence technology has on their relationships with their children. And one out of four parents, wish they had more information about technology and parenting, but don't know where to turn. Let me first start by saying I'm not anti-technology. I think technology is fascinating and can help our lives and relationships in many ways. One being these videos, right? But I do think technology can create barriers in relationships that lead to disconnection and unhappiness. Let me give you an example. I was with the SRAM fam a little while ago, presenting at a conference in San Diego. We went out to dinner, and as we were waiting for our food, I looked over and saw what appeared to be a father and his son, who was probably about nine or 10, and I thought, wow, what a great experience for those two, enjoying some one-on-one -on -one time. Then dessert arrived, and for the next eight minutes, the dad looked down at his phone while the boy ate his dessert in silence. And I thought, how sad. Here's a great opportunity to connect and have a wonderful time. And it was over the minute the man pulled out his phone for the rest of their time together. And this is happening quite a bit at mealtimes and restaurants. So I asked parents in my survey about this. It turns out that 88% of parents believe that kicking technology off of tables is a good idea. And about 40% of parents admitted to using technology at least occasionally while eating at home with family members. So here's the principle. Meal times are for togetherness and strengthening connection. I highly recommend turning off the TV and staying off the phones during all meal times. Keep the table phone free. Another place I encourage parents to stay phone free is in children's bedrooms and during bedtime routines. Let's say you're laying next to your five-year-old daughter in their bed, reading a book, and you hear or feel your phone go off. Immediately, our brains are wired to see what the notification is. Ultimately, it distracts us and can prevent us from focusing on the moment of connection we're having. So my advice, keep bedtime rituals phone free. I also recommend that when your children walk in the door or your sweetheart comes home from work, make those few minutes a time for reconnection. Even make an effort to get off the phone if you can, letting whoever it is know that your child or partner walked in the door and you want to talk with them. It shows your children or spouse that they are a priority. Research has also shown that children and teens can get distracted easily by their devices while they're doing homework. Studies continue to show that switching back and forth between reading and studying and digital devices interrupts focus and attention and even affects their ability to remember things they're learning. So my advice is no technology during homework. Here's some more tips right from the American Academy of Pediatrics. First, they recommend no screen time for children younger than 18 months, with the exception of Zoom or FaceTime to interact with others. They also say that between 18 to 24 months, parents can begin to introduce high quality programs and watch them together. From ages two to five, they suggest limiting screen time to one hour per day, high quality programs, games, or apps, but still being with your child when it's happening. From five to 18 years of age, they recommend setting consistent limits and encourage healthy habits like physical activity and eight to 12 hours of sleep per night. 
They also discourage using media while also doing other things such as eating, homework, or interacting with others. So there you have some tips and traps of digital devices. For more information, you can find a Technoference Tips PDF I created at the link below. For more information, visit relationships.usu.edu.